I was opening necks, you know, doing facelifts and neck lifts in my practice. And I had patients who, you know, sometimes didn't heal as evenly as I wanted them to, or they complained about the scar under the chin. Uh -huh. And so early on in the first few years, I just thought there's got to be a way to address those muscles underneath the neck without opening it. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and the shakers of the beauty business, and today is no exception. Today in the studio here in beautiful Manhattan Beach, California, we have my great friend here, Dr. Mueller. Thank you, Grant. It's so great to be here. I'm looking forward to today to talk to you. It's great to, for you to be here, Greg. So we're both physicians, so he's Greg to me, so he'll be Greg to you <laughs> also. Is that all right? That's all right with me, yes, okay, cool. absolutely. And he didn't have to drive very far, unlike many of our guests who have to fly in. You drove how many minutes? Uh, about 45 minutes from yeah. Beverly Hills, not So bad. he's a neighbor here, yes. so, uh, and a dear friend. And today we get to meet and learn all about his product, My Elevate. So again, thank you for joining us. Before we get to the product, I wanna learn more about you. So, and I know they do too. So where'd you grow up? So uh, I grew up in Nebraska, a little town called Ogallala, Nebraska. Tiny little town, um, 5,000 people. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I was kind of an inventor. I was always goofing around doing things. Almost became an engineer. Okay. Um, then went to University of Nebraska and went to University of Nebraska Medical School and then figured I wanted to come to California. It's sort of where everybody goes. Right. So I applied to general surgery out here and got into UC Irvine and uh -huh. did my full general surgery training there. And then SC is where I trained in plastic surgery. Sure. And I've been in practice here since 1998. Okay. And when you were at SC, it was when? From 96 to 98? Yes, with Randy Sherman. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, was, well, that guy. was with Randy. Yeah, great yep. guy. It reminds me, I need to talk to Randy about something. I'm glad that came up. <laughs> yeah, he was a great chair and a great guy, and he's a St. Louis boy, and yeah. I knew him. He and I are about the same vintage, so I knew him yeah. years and years ago when he was a med student, actually. Okay, so you finish at SC, if you did plastics. Uh, at SC in general surgery at Irvine. Yes. And then you went into private practice right here, right yeah. out? Mm hmm Okay. Right out of private, yeah. Terrific. And so how many years have you been in practice? So I've been in practice for 23 years. Okay. And uh, are you a member of the Aesthetic Society? I sure am a proud Fantastic. member, yes. Fantastic, yes. fantastic. The American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. So he's one of us. <laughs> okay, so you start your practice, mm -hmm. and when did you have the idea of inventing this, uh, what is now called My Elevate, which we'll get to in a minute? Sure. How, how, how know, did that all happen? It's, it's funny, Grant. I, you know, I trained in, in general surgery at UC Irvine, and in that process, I did the two-year research fellowship. So my intern and in, in second year, I was doing open procedures, open, you know, uh, gallbladder surgery, all that kind of stuff. And right. then I did my two years of research. When I came back, everything had converted to laparoscopic. So I had the opportunity to see open procedures, and then I saw the evolution into laparoscopic. And I think that's what created that, that sort of drive in my mind to see the benefits of not opening certain areas to do procedures. So okay. Cut forward, I go to USC, train with Randy Sherman, go out into practice, and I was opening necks, you know, doing facelifts and neck lifts in my practice. And I had patients who, you know, sometimes didn't heal as evenly as I wanted them to, or they complained about the scar under the chin. Uh -huh. And so early on in the first few years, I just thought there's got to be a way to address those muscles underneath the neck without opening it. And, you know, that's when I really started thinking, like, is there a way I can sew underneath there without opening the whole neck and exposing everything. So I, I used this lacing for the first few years, uh, which I called a trampoline. I would open the neck and then place it after I did cor the corset platysmoplasty, Feldman's. Oh, okay. And um, Was that percutaneous? It wasn't percutaneous in the beginning. I would just sort of do a little over sewing over the neck muscles to kind of smooth my edges of the platysma muscle. Okay. And um, the years went on and then I just thought, wow, there's gotta be a way I can sew those. And one day I was using my endoscope, I was doing an endo brow and I put my scope down into the neck just to look around, saw the light come through the skin. <laughs> I thought, wow, if I had a sewing needle that was illuminated, 
I could probably pass it under the skin and watch the light come through the skin, and I would know how deep I was. From the light, from the, the intensity light. of the light. The intensity of the light. Okay. Because I knew I couldn't use a scope to see enough in the neck. As you know, the anatomy just doesn't allow the expansion of the space to see around with a scope. Right. And so I thought if I had a small sewing needle that was illuminated with the suture attached to it, I could sort of create that lacing, what I called the trampoline, through little punctures. Okay. And I did my first one in 2007. And was it closed or open? It was closed. It was the first time I did a totally closed platysmoplasty. Okay. And it worked. (laughs) <laughs> and <laughs> imagine that imagine that <laughs> but the first tool i used was just a just a solid probe because uh-huh. i didn't have the fda cleared device yet so i just had a solid probe that i used uh-huh. so i would look with my scope to make sure i was in the right plane but just use the solid probe and then i knew i needed a light on it so i hired a biomedical engineer that was back in 2006 and we worked together to develop a total kit that would have a lighted rod, a light source, a little template you'd put on the skin, a little puncture device, and a little dermal clearing device. And we worked on it, and the first operation was the trampoline platysmoplasty, and you may remember that. Yes, I think I, I was abs- trying to get you to do it. I absolutely remember it. <laughs> no one could remember the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was complicated, you know, but I'd worked on it for years, mm-hmm. and we got it. Uh, Sherelle Aston and I, we did cadaver studies to show that the retaining ligaments would support sutures, because that's how the sutures anchor themselves. Okay. We actually weave them around the subcutaneous space, around the retaining ligaments so he and I did a study in Baltimore for the FDA and showed that those retaining ligaments will hold 10 pounds before they rupture and we compared that to the medial platysma borders those hold 10 pounds so we published that in ASJ in uh-huh. January of 2012. And that was the trampoline paper. Yes, I remember. But I couldn't well, I teach anyone. It. I, you did? Were <laughs> yes. you one of the reviewers? Yes. Oh, well, thank you. It got published. Yes, it did. It was tough to get it published, but you know it was. That was the foundational paper. And, you know, there was a lot of criticisms about the glands not being supported and all that kind of stuff. So here we had this FDA device, which costs millions of dollars to get it cleared. I started a little startup company. Mm -hmm. So my investors, I told them, I said, just wait. Let me figure out a way to (laughs) refine the technique, make it better, and make it teachable. So I spent almost a decade really working on my Elevate. Yeah, it was a long time. Hundreds of cases. I've done about 2,600 of them myself. And developed the camera system, a camera system that orbits around the face specifically so I could look at the necks and look at the, you know, looking down, Mm -hmm. looking up, just Mm -hmm. really see the dynamics of the system. And that enabled me to really learn exactly where to place the suture strands. And so I researched the literature again. And uh, GM Papa, you know, that technique where it's just a single strand from ear to ear and I use that as the template for my elevate okay and then spent you know the next few years figuring out that I needed two strands to have a more gentle wide area of support and you know refined it to the point where it was one strand that starts in the middle as you know and goes Mm -hmm. up behind one ear all the way across the other Mm -hmm. and then back out the middle and literally just tie it in the middle and um, that's how it all evolved I mean, but it was, I had to rename the whole thing because trampoline did not catch on. <laughs> <laughs> and platysmoplasty, no one knew what the heck you were talking oh, about. Yeah, patients kind of knew about it, you know, because right. it, people would come to me because they knew I didn't open necks. And, you know, patients love less invasive. Uh-huh. And they would come in and they'd say, do you do the platypusplasty? And you know, nobody could get the name right. So I was way off on the branding. Way okay. Off. Well... How did you get the name My Elevate? (laughs) And when? Go ahead. Shameless self-promotion on my part. Oh, no, it's a great story. Um, My partner in the company, who's a movie maker, he and I decided, you know, we need to go and see what industry says about things. And this is back in 2018. And it was kind of at the point where I had the procedure kind of fine-tuned and we'd done some beta testing and we, we saw that doctors could learn it and do it and reproduce the results. So we knew we had a procedure that worked. And we went to the AIS, the Aesthetic Innovation Summit. And I think it was the first one. It was in, in New York. In 2018. 2018. Yeah. 2018. 
And we went there, and you know, you had speakers because you were you set that whole thing up, mm-hmm. and you guys had speakers. Well, I was one of the co-chairmen, okay, myself well, and Josh and Mark. Okay, Mark Foley and Josh. That's right. Yes, Anchor. yes. So we were there, and you know, all the speakers you had, you know, leaders and so on in industry, and someone talked about branding. I don't mm-hmm. remember who it was, and just said, you know, you, you if you're going to do branding, that's so important, and you've got to have a name that sticks. You have to have a name that that resonates with people. And I'm not making this up. That very same day, there was a cocktail party. We were all there. It was Ted and I and another gentleman. And and Elevate, for some reason, I'd been thinking about it because it, what the procedure does, it elevates the structures under the neck. And I said, guys, what if we call it Elevate or My Elevate and uh, with two L's? Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we started talking about, well, you know, elevate your confidence, elevate your lifestyle, elevate your job, whatever. And we figured out that would be like a great word to use. And my elevate because it's like my, you know, my way of, of lifting my self confidence. And that's when we came up with the name. So you were at AIS or the yes, Aesthetic in Innovation York. Summit. So let's get this straight. They were at AIS drinking the AIS cocktails, <laughs> yes. following the AIS, and that's where they came up with the title. My Elevate. I'm pretty sh- certain there must be a royalty buried in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I might be in trouble. <laughs> Science here might come after me. <laughs> okay. Well, good. That's a good intro into the, my next question. So here you are. You've spent millions of dollars over a decade, overnight success. And, uh, <laughs> and we go from a tramp, trampoline platysmoplasty to my elevate, thanks to the AS. And yes. then you're doing it. I go to your office, I watch you do it. You're extremely good at it. Obviously, you're the father of it, you're the founder. Um, very impressive, I must say. And, uh, and then you sell it. And you sell it to a laser company. What's that yeah. all about? So walk us through that. So, sure. So we we uh, <laughs> we decided we would launch it in 2019, and uh, you know we all know what happened in 2020, mm-hmm. and so we thought, oh my gosh, you know the pandemic's hitting. How on earth are we going to finally launch our technique and and my elevate? And so we decided we would push forward and do a lot of virtual teaching, and so we did. And through the pandemic, I would say, aside from California, because California, we were so shut down out here, we had 30% growth in revenues quarter over quarter for six quarters. Oh, that's fantastic. So it drew I didn't some know attention that. of yeah. industry. It drew some attention of industry. And so, you know, we had uh, several companies who were interested in us looking at us, mainly energy based companies. I won't oh. name them by name. Of course. But we were talking to several. And we'd always liked the company Sinusure because in the beginning I used a technology called Slim Lipo and then it became Smart Lipo, if you remember. Right, sure. And I loved the combination of energy with suture suspension because I felt like that could take a patient who might need skin removal and change them into a patient who wouldn't need it. Interesting. And we could address the underlying muscles without having to open the neck. So now you've got a patient who can have something done when they're just starting to age. And so it seemed like a good fit when Sinusure started kind of knocking on our door a little bit. Okay. And it was a long process. I mean, it was a dance. <laughs> I'll bet. With these companies, you know, because they were interested and then, you know, everybody kind of plays, you know, coy and so on. But they they really talked about a really good plan that we felt would work. They, f- they were sensitive to the idea that it had to be slow introduction to the right surgeons. Okay. Um, and they wanted it to be successful, but they weren't so focused on just huge numbers of, you know, just. That sounds very numbers. smart. So education was key then, it sounds education like. Education was key. And we really spent a lot of time on that because, you know, my investors, we'd all been at it for over a decade. And they said, the last thing we want to see is a company <laughs> blow it out and it blow up. Uh-huh. And, you know, you've heard, you know, the story. Yes. We can talk about those of technologies yes. that have been overexpanded mm-hmm. with the wrong doctors. Mm-hmm. And they seemed to get it, you know, and so we we <laughs> negotiated and we were in due diligence, it seemed, for like years uh-huh. with them. And the deal finally closed in August of 2021. And okay. they acquired our little company, My Elevate. And, uh, well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. To you and your investors. Thank you. And I'm like not one of his investors. 
Unfortunately, you came in at the last minute, unfortunately, and we were showing you. I and was then kept the deal away just, from that no, deal. No, we would never. It just <laughs> I'm happened. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Okay, so I'm I'm really happy for you, and you stayed on. They kept you on as a consultant, right? Yes. Or, yeah. In uh, your role as a consultant for product development, for education, or what? I I don't know. Yeah. Uh, everything, all of the above. Yeah, the teaching program, and you know, as you know, with everything that we do, publications are key and paramount. Yep. So we're working on those. Okay. Um, because we want to get a very nice peer-reviewed paper to show the, the new technique that will follow the trampoline paper that no one can remember <laughs> the name of. Um, so we're working on that, and then just really helping them with the educational programs. Are you combining it with any, any energy-based technologies, lasers, radio frequency, ultrasound, anything else? Absolutely. You are? Absolutely. Okay. So for, you know, we have a type one, two, three patient selection. So ones would be a genetic sort of obtuse neck, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who was born with that ski slope neck, who, mm -hmm. you know, their sister looks great, but they don't. Um, so those are great ones to just help kind of uh, defy genetics. Okay. Type two patients, those are the energy patients. Those are the ones who are a little bit older, who are getting some skin sagginess. And we've used it with radio frequency, laser, uh, J plasma, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, Vaser. And Vaser works okay, but it's not really good for skin tightening. Okay. But they all work with it. So. Okay. And you said there are three types. What's the third type? Oh, and then type three. Oh, yeah. Type three is, <laughs> thank you, you remembered. <laughs> uh, type three is uh, when we're removing skin. So um, I don't open necks anymore. Um, you know, the, the corset platysmoplasty just never worked predictably for me all the time. And so when I do a facelift or neck lift, I will do all of my facelift, neck lift work, including a SMAS or, you know, whatever I'm doing, close everything then my last step will be placing the My Elevate suture suspension. So I'll to mess the whole neck and tunnel it, but I don't ever open the front of the neck. Okay. What if there's fat underneath the chin and so forth? Do you liposuction of still? Of course, yeah. And you do that from the posterior incision? Or? Uh -huh, posterior and then also the little <clears throat> submental stab Oh, incision. you do do a submental? Oh, yeah, okay. just a stab. Stab incision with a 15 blade. Okay. Yes. Okay, when yes. you mention no incision, I think, how are you oh, going to get the yes. submentum out? <laughs> That's kind of a tough one. I could do it, but yeah. in a small, short enough neck. But yeah. No, no, no. no. Definitely a submental stab incision, then earlobe face junction stab incision in all the cases, for sure. Now, in this My Elevate, everything you've pointed to and we've been talking about is it, we've heard the word neck over and over. Mm -hmm. How far above the mandible do you go? Is this a facial procedure also? I know some other things that are similar. Is this for cheeks, for jowls, for temples? What other uses, if any, are there for sure, my elevator? Sure, sure. You know, there's, you know, <laughs> threads are used, you know, in the, in the mid face and the forehead and so on. And threads, as you know, you know, those are placed kind of in the substance of the skin and they absorb and they have barbed, uh, you know, barbed characteristics to them. My elevate, we've used it in the mid face, um, similar kind of to a max lift, um, mm -hmm. but instead of sort of a loop, it's more of just a V-shaped uh, vector where we start up here in the temporal area, make a little incision here, come straight down, come out of the skin, and then go straight up. And you do some tumescing and tunneling so you can efface the nasolabial fold. That one's a little bit more tricky, and it's still in development. Okay. Um, Barry DiBernardo and Jason Posner, they're kind of working on that a little bit. Um, I did many years ago, but I just, the neck is just so easy. It's just a slam dunk. Sure. Mid-face, you know, to get symmetry, to tie both sides exactly the same, that's a little bit more fussy. Okay. And I've also used it for brow fixation and shaping. So I'll do an endoscopic brow, release the periosteum, and then just send down uh, you know, a couple suture loops to just lift and shape the brow. And is it catching the po the dermis then at that it's point? Catching the, the retaining ligament. Retaining so ligaments. everything's based on the <clears throat> dermal reticular network. Okay. Everything. So you to mass everything and tunnel everything. Got to it. Prepare it. So now this is in the hands of Sinusure, yes. and you have a long-term contract, so you're invested in their success, and your investors would be happier if they, I'm sure you have different, uh, what do you call them, tranche points, or yes. what's the term that's used? That milestones. 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 Yes. So you're, you want them to be successful, of course, and we all do. Absolutely. You have these milestones. Um, what do you see? here looking forward what do you, are they going to change the technology is it going to be they're selling to more people what kind of changes can we expect from signature as it relates to my elevator sure. if you can tell me sure 
Yeah, no, 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 I can tell you. Um, I would say this, you know, when we partnered with them or when they acquired us actually, but I guess I partnered with them. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the goal was to find a company that had the infrastructure to support the education program and also the marketing, you know, uh, support for sure. doctors and for patients. And so what they're doing is really developing a huge amount of support material for patients and doctors and also the educational program. So we're expanding the United States, but tomorrow I'm on a call uh, with several surgeons, a surgeon from Italy, a surgeon from France, a surgeon from the UK, all very prominent plastic surgeons in that area of the world. So we're expanding uh, in Europe and then Asia would be next. So it's, it's a global sort of you know, expansion, which is great. They have the instru- infrastructure to do it. Um, I see the development probably of mid-face you know, work in the future as well, uh, maybe with some sort of elastic suture, uh, something with a little bit of uh, elasticity to it, I think would work better in the mid-face. Okay. So we're just kind of you know, seeing where it finds its place. I don't think they'll change the base kit that much, you know, the lighted needle and thread. Um, but I do see other applications in the body that we'll be working on. Oh, and other non-facial applications. Yeah, there may be some other ones. Maybe, you know, knee area, mm-hmm. you know, just areas where <clears throat> suture suspension would help with soft tissues and just help with contours. Um, I used it. Um, I don't do that much breast anymore because my world has become everything above the shoulders. Uh-huh. But I've certainly used it to help create the inframammary fold. Uh, by placing a suture strand, two strands that go underneath the fold of the uh-huh. mammary crease, things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, mid-face. What plane are you at? If you do access it through the temple, say, yeah, or, are you subcutaneous or are you peri, uh, periosteal? Or you, are you deep to the vital structures or superficial, uh, you know, specifically the nerves? Sure, sure. And yeah, so absolutely. forth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture where yeah. you're at because I know sure. with typical uh, suture lifts and so forth, uh, uh, it's subcutaneous with barbs and sure. so forth. Exactly. I'm just curious when you do, when you approach the mid face with the my elevate, what level are you at? Yeah. So the principle of the procedure that makes it work is tumescing the area and uh-huh. tunneling it. And it's all in the subcutaneous plane. Okay. And everything regarding these uh, anchoring of the sutures uh-huh. is based on the dermal reticular network. Okay. So you're threading it through the subcutaneous space around that dermal reticular network, which is very dense and fibrous. It's like a forest of trees. Okay. And so you're just weaving the suture material in and around there, and that's what lifts everything and supports it. So by tunneling it and, and uh, tumescing it, you lift that skin up. So you create a nice plane to work in, uh-huh. but it also helps eliminate dimpling and things like that that you would be worried about, you know, mm-hmm. you're threading sutures in there. So it's not in the skin. Okay. You want to place that suture in the sub-Q space. Okay. And do you visualize this through a scope as you're doing it, or, or you're visualizing the light through the skin? Or light both? through the skin. So okay. you're, yeah, no scope, so it's just the light through the skin. So you're tumescing everything, then you just use a spatulated lipo cannula, a two or a three millimeter, Uh tunnel the space, and then you just pass the rod through that space. Interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, it's very fascinating. I have seen you do it, and I'm very impressed, as you know. I'm probably a little bit too old as a candidate for it, but I might let you do it just to see if you can uh, make this dog hunt a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really curious about ways you can use it in the body, the breasts, the buttocks, uh, the arms, knees, and so forth. I'm really curious what your plans are. Uh, Have you been working on cadavers on that? or Um, We haven't been working on cadavers. That's definitely in the works, though. We did a lot of work in London last month where we were in the gross anatomy lab, you know, just kind of playing around with it in different body parts and so on. And and sinus, they don't want to talk much about that. But I think there's other applications that I think it could be very helpful and possibly using an absorbable suture. What we use now is a permanent suture, but I think there's other ways you could. Do you supply the suture also? Oh yeah, yeah. So the whole kit, and and there's no capital expense, right? So the dogs watching this, they they could just buy it. You can, can you buy one or do you buy a half dozen? Yeah, so Sinusure, that's their department. So um, the way the doctors become uh, my Elevate surgeon is Sinusure provides training. The doctor pays like a, it's a starter package is what it's called. 
And that includes several kits, uh -huh. it includes a nurse who comes to your office and does a couple cases with you. And the nurse helps you vet patients and do patient selection, the whole works. Uh -huh. They show you how to properly use the kit. You can also come watch me or Barry DiBernardo or Jason Posner. We're getting a center going in Dallas yet, which hopefully that'll be announced soon. So you can come and watch the procedure, then you get going and then you buy kits. Just like you would buy a breast implant, you'd never buy one. Because mm -hmm. if you drop one on the floor, if right. there's something wrong with sure, it, sure. you want to have a backup. Yep. So, you know, I think most doctors buy five kits minimum at a time. Makes sense. And you use one kit per procedure. And it has everything in it. It has a marking tape. So you mark where you place the little punctures. It has a puncture device that makes just the perfect size little punctures in the skin, just slightly smaller than two millimeters has a little dermal clearing device because you want to clear the dermal retaining ligaments around each little puncture so that when you're passing that rod and suture in and out, it just goes in and out easily so the suture doesn't get caught up by the surface because mm -hmm. it's permanent suture. And then there's a light source. So you've got everything you need. And there's 100 inches of suture attached to the rod. And okay. it's a 4-0 braided polyester. And when a person has their neck done, <clears throat> a couple questions. Uh, what type of anesthesia and how long is the procedure in general? Mm -hmm. Well, how long? Yeah. So, so this morning I did two. Okay. Uh, both were local. Okay. Um, both did not involve skin removal. So those take one hour. And that is, that is not rushing or anything. And one hour I mean from injecting the platysma bands, which we cut. I'll tell you about that, how we make a little Ooh. division in the bands, to finishing the procedures one hour. And the recovery? Recovery time, usually bruising for six to ten days. We have our patients wear a soft collar like they were rear-ended in a car accident okay, for 10 I'm days. Familiar with that. The reason we do that is part of the procedure is that we're going to cut the bands and we do it through a little percutaneous approach. We actually pass the suture that comes on the rod around the edge of the bands and cut it like a little giggly saw. And then we do the um, laser treatment to the skin and then a little fat removal. And then the last step is the myelevate and that lifts and separates the bands. The collar keeps the muscle bands apart so they don't reconnect. That's why Do you work. cut the platysma bands before you do the things you were just telling me about? Yes. It's the first step of the procedure. First step. Because you want to just inject a little bit of local. You want to be able to feel the band so you pinch and pull it away from the neck and then just pass the rod through the edge of the muscle and around it and then use the suture to cut it. Can you explain to my listeners and watchers what a giggly saw is yes. or how you meant the platysma is being cut? Because I know yeah. you're telling me because I use a giggly saw. Sure. But uh, yeah. some of my viewers and listeners have never heard of a giggly sure. saw. So what are you describing? So a giggly saw is a saw <laughs> that's sort of like a cord that is sharp. And it's got two handles on either end. And I remember at the VA hospital, we would use those. <laughs> yes. In very terrible in my cases. Training. Yes, very terrible cases. <laughs> but there's a need for it, but they mm -hmm. were used in amputations. And so this uh, principle of using this saw that's very flexible and has sort of like a cord in it is you can put it around things and cut them. So we use that same principle. And I didn't come up with this. Someone else published this many years ago where they were really? using, yeah, they were using a Keith needle and a Vicryl suture to cut bands. But what I learned is you can cut the bands very easily, but you have to lift and separate them or they reconnect. You know, muscle finds itself. You yeah, know, you just like it. up here when I was doing my first endoscopic brows, they yeah. seem to somehow have a mind of their own. Oh, and they find reconnect. each other again. Yeah, they do. They do. I had to resect some and mm -hmm. take. We have a space. Yes. Yeah, you'd have to. Have that a they space. couldn't overcome. So that's why your soft neck collar. That's why the soft neck collar, and that's also why the suture suspension. So we cut uh, them as the first step of the procedure I with see. just a little bit of lido. Then you do all. Then you tumes. You tunnel. Treat with a laser or radio frequency to tighten the skin, suction your fat out. Last step is the suture suspension. And that's what lifts and separates the edges of the muscle. The collar helps to just keep them even more separated. Okay. And does anybody ever do uh, fillers or modulators at the same time? Um, I wouldn't because, you know, you, definitely in the mid face I've done it around the eyes and so on, but definitely not along the jawline because I treat the lower face with the energy-based skin tightening technology because this is a whole envelope of skin I want to tighten. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't do fillers then. Um, I usually tell my patients, let's do this, and then, you know, six weeks later we can add fillers if you feel you need them. That was my follow-up question. Yeah. When do you tell them to come back in? Yeah, we see them. Well, we you see, see them, of course, right yeah. away. But, I mean, if they want to do ancillary procedures. Six weeks. <clears throat> and I do that with my facelifts, too. Kind of that's sort of our golden time is six weeks. They can start doing things and other treatments. Excellent. Well, 
Thank you very much. And I want to ask you about a little bit more about your uh, uh, crystal ball. And uh, are there any things that, that in the future that you see you haven't shared with us yet? I mean, <laughs> you're such an innovator and an inventor. And you've been like that since you were a kid, it's obvious. And we didn't even explore some of the other things you invented <laughs> today. Um, what do you see in the future for us as aesthetic surgeons, aesthetic practitioners, surgery, non-surgery? What, what's, yeah. what are we going to see in three, five years from now? I mean, I, I think a lot of it is, is going to go back to genetic manipulation, you know, people being able to alter our genes and, and the way we age and the way our skin ages and things like that. But that's down the road. Okay. Um, I think we're going to have jobs for our lifetime. <laughs> 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 but I think, uh, you know, consumers want less invasive. Consumers, but they want things that work. And with social media and the whole obsession with people looking at themselves, I think as plastic surgeons, we have to we have to provide solutions that do work, and we have to provide solutions that are tailored for each patient. So you know, I love doing complex surgery. You know, I'm a nerd. I like that. I like futzing around. But what I learned with my Elevate is the patients don't always want to have a complex surgery, and they don't like to futz around. They uh -huh. want to like have something, have it work, and get back out there. So in answer to your question, I think the, the future crystal ball is new technologies that, that are less invasive but yet have long-lasting results and things that are effective and, and give the patients what they want. But it's an exciting time, I think. Yeah, for all oh, it's very Definitely. exciting. There's no question about it. Yeah. And we have a lot of younger consumers, and we also have older consumers. It's interesting to see the demographics. The over 65 is growing at the same time rate is the under 25. It's just pretty amazing to me what we're seeing in terms of the demographics pursuing aesthetic uh, improvements, Absolutely. especially non-surgical and minimally invasive. Absolutely. It's yeah. uh, pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've learned a ton and I'm going to call and uh, get on your schedule, I think. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> it would be my honor to take care of you. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on uh, selling uh, this baby of yours, this overnight success. It took 10 years and millions of dollars. But uh, congratulations. That's so wonderful to see a colleague such as you and a member of the Aesthetic Society and a fellow board-certified plastic surgeon who's a brilliant nerd to use your term nerd I don't, I don't think you're a nerd but oh, thanks, you're brilliant man. in your uh, your creativity and i want to compliment you and thank you for coming here and spending time with us because uh, i know the viewers and the listeners uh want to hear about this and my elevator is still relatively new out oh, there yeah. Yeah. and uh, uh i want them to get to know all about these great new technologies on the technology of beauty right yeah absolutely well grant thank you and and i would say this to your viewers and anybody who's a plastic surgeon out there who are thinking about ideas and and you know how they want to improve our specialty um it, it's been an amazing journey it's been a very expensive journey um and it's funny you know as surgeons we're trained to put up with a lot of stress and you know we are you know and mm -hmm. we we spend a lot of years training and, and we learn to manage it but doing a startup is a different type of stress and it's uh you know it's it's just the grind and so on but i'm so grateful that i stuck in there and did it and if i weren't the end user of my elevate i probably would have not stuck with it but i saw the benefits with patients and i think that's what i love the most about our field is the creativity that we get to do mm -hmm. and the impact we make with our patients and so i hope if people are watching and they're thinking about creating something i hope they do it but also realize it's a big investment. <laughs> Time, yeah. money, blood, sweat, and No tears. question. And yeah. you're sitting there, uh, and you've done it. Yeah. So hopefully they can contact you and get a little Absolutely. advice from you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Be my well, honor. Great. Well, thank you, Greg, again. I appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us on this latest episode of The Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and the shakers of the beauty business. And today was certainly no exception, as you saw, with Dr. Mueller. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you around. Sounds great. Thanks, Take care. Grant. Thank Bye, you. everybody. See you in the next show.